Question number three, the Honourable Marion Street. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Tertiary Education and asks, what advice has she received about the number of adult and community education courses which are unlikely to be offered in 2010 as a result of the government's funding cuts in this area? The Honourable Anne Tully. The Tertiary Education Commission does not purchase adult and community education on a course-by-course -course basis. Providers determine the number of specific courses they deliver within an overall funding allocation by TEC, and that member used to hold the delegation for adult and community education, so I presume that she would know this. The government continues to invest $124 million in adult and community education over the next four years. The Hon. Marion Street. Supplementary to the Minister. Which of the following courses offered and supported by Tangaroa College in South Auckland does she think should be self-funded by the participants? Mathematics for Tongan parents, volunteer training and financial management advice for the Otara Budgeting Service, or making step families work, a parenting course run by Family Works? The Hon. Anne Tolley. Uh, Mr Speaker, over many days in this House, I have explained to that member the priorities for funding of adult and community education. They are literacy, numeracy and foundation courses. I, as Minister, will not decide anything. Tertiary Education Commission will make the decisions as to who, what providers are funded for what. The Hon. Marion Street. Further supplementary, Mr Speaker. What hope does she offer to her Māori Party colleague, Te Ururoa Flavel, who said in a recent speech to the ACE conference 2009, quote, it would be difficult to have too much hope when the so-called future growth of the foundation learning pool, adult literacy educator grants, literacy and industry training and employee one-to-one -one literacy provision has been removed, unquote. The Honourable Anne Tully. Mr Speaker, I repeat to that member that the priorities in the middle of an economic recession for adult and community education, as have been explained to the Māori Party, are literacy and numeracy, foundation skills and courses, and courses that will lead to employment for people. Louise Upston. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Supplementary to the Minister for Tertiary Education. What Order. reports has she seen of commentators misleading the public over adult and community education funding? The Honourable Anne Tully. Uh, Mr Speaker, I've seen a release from the Labour member Lynn Pillay, the Labour List member Lynn Pillay, claiming that sign language courses will be cut. Well, this is not the case. Absolutely not the case. Will continue to receive ACE funding because it fits within the government's adult and community education program. We either want an answer or you don't. They won't be cut. This is scaremongering of the worst kind by the opposition order, for members order, of the community. I, order. I, I apologise to the Minister for interrupting her answer, but honestly, I cannot hear her answer, and I think. It is important that if I can't hear the answer, I'm sure other members of the House can't hear the answer, and I'm sure the House is interested in hearing the answer. Well, order, order. I would ask just a little more reasonableness in the volume of noise. The Honourable Anne Tolley. Mr Speaker, that absolutely proves the point. The Labour opposition is not interested in the facts about what will be funded by adult and community education in the future. They're more interested in producing another press release that is factually incorrect. Sign language will be funded, will continue to be funded. And if you'd asked the question, you would have got the answer. The Honourable Marion Street. Order. Further supplementary to the Minister, what is the Minister saying to the 1,676 students who participated in an adult and community education course run through Whakatane High School last year and the 800 who have enrolled so far this year who will not be able to avail themselves of the well-known parenting course for fathers and sons and many other courses besides 
or are all such courses simply hobby courses in her book? The Honourable Anne Tolley. Mr Speaker, as I said to that member, in answer to her similar questions on Tuesday, parenting courses throughout New Zealand are funded through a variety of means by uh, internal affairs, by DHB, by MSD, and some of them have been funded through schools. The best advice that that member could give, as I have given to those students who are being funded through the Fakatani High School, is to be oh, in point touch of order, with order, Point of order, the Honourable Tariana Turia. I'm just seeking your guidance. It was raised in the House a couple of days ago about people moving to other parts of the House and then barracking. And I'd like you to note that there are people from Labor sitting in the front row who don't normally sit there who are barracking. The order. Oh, I'll hear the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Mr Speaker, I think you've seen from our exchange that the major volume of barracking was in fact coming from me. You corrected me for it. Uh, and, sir, um, the member hasn't been in the House that often, but I have been shifted on the front bench again recently. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't need to hear further. I'm sure the member's benchmate uh, has also been uh, uh, interjecting with uh, considerable volume. And I'd just, I'd just ask all members. I mean, the rule, I think, is it's sometimes a fairly unworkable rule because members do move around the House uh, these days to, and it's unreasonable to expect them to stay in their own seats. All I'd ask, though, it is that all members are reasonable with their interjections. And, and remember that, that, in fact, in the acoustics in this House, members in the front benches do make it very hard to hear what's going on, because the volume at the front here can be very loud. And, and so just a bit of reasonableness is all I'm, all I'm asking for. Has the Honourable Anne Tolley finished her answer? Or point of order is it the Honourable Bill English? Mr. Mr Speaker, um, does that mean that the rules have changed? Um, well, for, for at least 19 years, as far as I'm aware, the rule has been if you shift seats to give yourself advantage, you can, cannot interject. That's the rule. And if you're going to change it, it would be, um, I think you should make it quite clear you're changing the rule. Speaking of the point of order, the Honourable Trevor. Uh, Mr Speaker, the rule, in fact, is that members can't shift for the purpose of interjecting. Uh, and, sir, there's a, there's a subjective test involved in that which, which only you can decide. Uh, and even then, sir, uh, likely to be challenged when you do. I appreciate oh, the Honourable Rodney Hyde. I think that's quite true, but I mean, who on, in their right mind would otherwise choose to sit beside the angry one? Oh, order, them? order. <laughs> that is not acceptable. Order, order. Now that is not acceptable. I'd ask the honourable member to uh, stand, withdraw, and apologise to the House for that abuse of standing orders. I, I withdraw and apologise. Now order, no, no, order. No, no, we've had enough. I've, I've heard quite enough on this matter. The Honourable Trevor Mallard was absolutely correct in terms of the, that members cannot shift their seats for the purpose of, of interjecting more effectively or more closely. All I'm asking the House is, I'm not changing the rules, all I'm asking the House is to be sensible and reasonable. Uh, a certain amount of interjection is good and healthy, and where ministers give provocative answers, there will be interjection. And, uh, and that's good and healthy. It shows the Member, the House is listening to the answer. That's good. But I'm just asking that it uh, be a little bit reasonable at times there. It's just got so loud that it's difficult to hear. Now, had the Honourable Anne Tolley finished her answer? OK. Uh, point of order, the Honourable Marion Street. Uh, Mr Speaker, I was under the impression that the Minister had not, in fact, finished her answer when the Honourable Tariana Turia raised her point of order. I thought she was mid-sentence. Order. The, uh, the Minister can be only, the only judge of whether or not she's finished her answer. 